Three years ago, me, my brother Billy, and his fiancée Gwendolyn took on the mammoth task of restoring this stunning French chateau. At first, it was just the three of us. But since then, the whole family has moved in to help bring this place back to its former glory. And not forgetting the newest family member, baby Ernest. We do everything ourselves, from fixing the leaky roof, managing the vast 60-acre estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were a hundred years ago. It's not always easy, but that's what makes life in a place like this interesting. My name's Michael, and I'm going to be showing you what it's like to live, work, and play at Chateau de la Bamignée. Stephanie Jarvis, you promised me sunshine and lovely weather at Chateau de la Lande. I come here for a holiday and look what you've given me. I know, the gods Awful have promised weather. me. What are you up to then? I'm um, writing the thank you cards to my patrons. Can I have one? Yes, you can have one. Do you want a Lord of Lalande card? Thank you very much. How exciting. There you go, sir. Dear Michael, you're now an honorary Lord of Lalande, as well as being my bestie. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Also, you're making lasagna, so I'm quite yep. looking forward to later. I am, well, because it's horrible weather outside, can't really go out and do much. I'm going to be making my famous lasagna. Have you had my lasagna before, Steph? I have, and that is why I'm this excited. And that's what's fueling this letter writing. There's going to be delicious, warm and yummy lasagna at the end of it. Well, it's mm. got a bit cold outside, so I think it's the perfect food today. Definitely. So here we go. I'm going to be giving away my secret recipe for lasagna today. It's, uh, it's a bit of a favourite at the chateau where I normally live, Chateau de la Bamignée. Bit of a favourite here too. Well, if, it, if I say I'm going to make lasagna, everyone's eyes light up, so... <laughs> make it today. But you don't take shortcuts with this lasagna, that's the only thing. It no, takes I, a while. I make all of the sauce from scratch. Well today I'm going to be using cast iron. If you don't have cast iron you can just use a normal frying pan or a saucepan but these are great because they give such even heat. This is great because what I can do is once I've actually cooked all, all of it uh, and got it given it its first cook what I can do is then I can put it in the oven on a low heat with the lid on and it'll just simmer and I'll leave it all day because this sauce is best when it's cooked for a few hours. Mm. So let's get started. <laughs> Just let that heat up for a bit. Right, so the trick to this recipe is plenty of olive oil. Don't be scared. There we go. How are you doing, Steph? Really good. Four down and 296 left to go. Right, so you'll be there for a while then. <laughs> At least I've got someone to talk to. <laughs> right, so that oil's nice and hot now. Let's just turn it down for a bit. Some bay leaves. These are from the garden, Steph. Yes, yeah, we have a huge a bush, well, a whole hedge of bay in the vegetable garden. I love bay leaves. I'll let those sizzle for a bit in the oil, release the flavour. Right, so into the hot oil, I'm going to add some diced onions. Right, well, they're sizzling away nicely. Um, now I'm going to add some garlic. I've probably got about four or five large cloves of garlic here. I'm not going to put all of it in. It tends to burn garlic if you put it in hot oil. So I'll just add a little bit to put some of that flavour into the oil. There we go. I'll save the rest for the sauce afterwards. So give this a quick stir. Now this sauce, I obviously, I'm using it to make a lasagna, but you can actually just use it for anything. You could put it with some spaghetti and have a spaghetti bolognese, or you could even add some kidney beans and some chili, maybe a bit of cumin and turn it into a chili con carne. So it's quite a versatile tomato sauce. They call it a ragu in Italy, Steph. I think so, yeah. 
so, yes. Ragu, and it's usually cooked like for quite a long time. And they make um, wild boar ragu, like just Ooh. cooked and cooked and cooked for hours. That sounds amazing. Mm, with pappardelle. But I haven't got wild boar today. <laughs> right, so I've got the onions, they've browned off nicely, they've gone nice and soft. I've added a little bit of garlic to that. And now I'm going to add the minced beef. This is probably about 600 grams of minced beef here. Uh, that's probably just over a pound. And now I'm just going to put that in. I'm just going to try and break it up. There's nothing worse than minced beef when it's all stuck together in clumps. So I'm going to try and break it up. And the best thing to put the beef, minced beef, in this sauce is balsamic vinegar because I'm not sure how it works, but it tenderizes the meat and it gives the sauce a really nice flavor. I actually made this sauce recently and I didn't have balsamic vinegar and it just didn't taste the same. It just adds something to it. Just so, such a perfectionist. I know. So I'm just gonna add a nice amount. Oh yeah, that's more than I would have thought. Mm. Yeah. And that will help to break the meat up as well. Mm, it smells amazing. Right, so that's cooking away nicely. What I'm going to do now is here, I've got some double concentrate tomato puree. Now I'm going to add a nice dollop of that, maybe a little bit more, to the beef. Stir that in. And now for my secret ingredient, I'm going to add, believe it or not, chicken stock to this. So I think I'm mad. Bear with me on this one. I haven't gone mad. <laughs> I, ha I did it once. I was making this and I didn't have uh, beef stock. Yeah. So I only had chicken stock and I put it in and it just tasted, it just gave it a whole new flavour. So I'm going to add some chicken stock. It's a bit awful being in here right now because it smells so good and I know it's going to be hours until that's ready and that's not great. No, you're not going to have this till this evening. It smells so good. It's now just on midday. So here I've got two, well these are Nor chicken stock cubes, they're my favourite ones, but you can use any brand. So I'm just going to pop those straight in. No need to mix them with water first, because they will dissolve into the sauce as it cooks. And there's the second one. I'm going to mix those in now, break them up a bit. Now, it's time to add the red wine. Oh, well shouldn't, shouldn't I be helping by drinking some in the back? Oh, definitely. Can you pour me a glass as well? Yeah, like <laughs> How much do you need for that? Quite a bit, probably two large glasses. Okay. Maybe a bit more that. actually. Thing is, I put lots of red wine in it and then I let it reduce. Oh yeah, that's probably, yeah, like that of red wine. If you've got that spare. Yeah, yeah. And you want one for yourself as well? Just a little bit. Why not? Right, Michael. This one is for the lasagna. This one is for you. Get them the wrong way around at your own peril. No, I don't think I could drink that much wine still. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't you. be a lasagna if I had that. I'd have to go to bed. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Right. In we go. So, there we go. We've added the chicken stock. And now I'm going to add a nice amount of red wine. I won't put all of that in to start with. I'll leave some to one side. I have been known to use half a bottle of red wine in a sauce like this, but that's when I've uh, used a lot more meat and a lot more tomatoes. And usually that's if I make lasagna for about 12 people, which isn't very often, but today we're making it for about six people. So there'd be plenty for, there's only four of us at the minute, so there'd be plenty. Good, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right, well that's looking good. Doesn't look very tomatoey at the moment, but it will do soon. So now I'm gonna add the rest of the garlic, which we've got here on this little plate. No need to chop it up too fine because it'll all simmer down. There we go. Now at this point, I'd probably add some basil, but I don't think you've got basil, Stephanie. I saw a little bit in the greenhouse. I don't think there's a massive amount, but there's some- Well, actual fresh basil? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Right, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the greenhouse. Have you seen this? I don't believe it. Mummy! Mummy, it's raining and oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> stop it! Mummy, stop! Your 
you're doing a beautiful job, but stop. Oh, Dan, I didn't realize you were there. <laughs> I would not have started it had Dan, had Dan not been here. I thought she was just pulling it all off by herself there. Yeah, she couldn't help herself. No, she never can. You have to stop her, Dan. <laughs> just tie her up. <laughs> Isn't it a beauty? It this is. is wall it's wall. actually beautiful. Yeah, I've never seen the wall. Never never seen the wall. There, but... That was a few years ago. And then nobody takes over when I'm gone and I've been gone a long time. But now the mighty Dan is here. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to be all right from now on. Thank God for that. Mummy, we're here on a mission. Okay. Michael Petrick mm -hmm. needs some basil. Basil? Yes, and I thought I saw some. We have basil. Basil, oh, that's basil. There's basil there. Yeah, well, I'll get a couple of, take the large leaves off. Oh yes, because there's more growing in a row there. Yeah. No, that must be the lunch bell, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful day for it, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> These magnificent bushes over here are all marjoram, so you should taste oh, a bit of that. It does actually look very similar to oregano. I can smell that from here. It's amazing. Won't need a lot of that. That's mm. perfect. Okay, back to the kitchen then. Yeah, it's such a beautiful day. <laughs> Mummy, would you please come in? Come in! She doesn't stop, does she? She never stops. Got some fresh basil now, straight from the garden or the greenhouse. Uh, apparently, Jamie Oliver says, do not chop your basil, tear it, because it releases more of the flavor. So we're just gonna tear it up. Well, I'm actually going to save a little bit um, towards the end because it's nice to add a little bit at the end just to give it that green colour. Little bits of green in the red. Looks stunning. Right, so I'm going to add the tomatoes now. You can use any kind of tomato. We've just got a mixture of round red ones. There's a, a black beef tomato there. We're going to put that in. You can use cherry tomatoes, anything really. So these aren't cooked, so it will take a few hours to cook down, but just makes it taste much better. It's worth it. Yeah. And I'm going to probably add a bit more as a red wine right now. And just let that simmer for a little while. There's still a few more ingredients to add, but I'll add those a bit later. The delivery van's arrived and Michael's wondering if it's a parcel for him. I think he's ordered some goodies. We'll get super excited whenever the delivery van arrives. Was it your parcel? No. Oh. It's Amazon. Ah, uh, it's probably a book I've ordered. Oh, it seems a bit too light for a book. It feels like there's nothing in it. Right, well, I've just taken that off the heat. I'm going to put it on a, a smaller ring at the back so it's uh, going to simmer away gently now. But the last, last special ingredient is, voila, marmite. Well, actually, in England, we call it marmite, but marmite is a French word, isn't it, Steph? It is. And what is a marmite? I think it's pretty much what you're using to cook it. One of these. So there you go. So when I was a child, uh, the town near where I used to live, it was called Faversham, and it actually had the oldest beer brewery in the UK. Uh, and it, um, when I used to go past as a child, I'd always see the, the marmite Big tankers, they're like, you know, the ones that they carry milk or oil mm. or whatever, like a big metal thing on a lorry with Marmite written on the side. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so when they brew the beer, they obviously put yeast in it. Uh, and when the yeast dies, the uh, whatever's left over sinks to the bottom. They just collect it from the bottom of the tanks and they add salt to it, I think. I think that's basically it. They just so add great that nothing's wasted. Yeah, so they don't waste anything. And it's uh, basically a natural flavour enhancer. Oh, there's no delicious. energy or anything like that, and it's completely natural, and I love it. Some mm. people don't like this, but I love it. I love it. Mm. And it's great. The thing is, the reason it's called Marmite, or Marmite, is because tra traditionally you would have just added a little spoon of it into your stocks or your casseroles mm. or things like that. But people have it on toast now and all sorts. But I definitely have it on toast. But um, yeah, I'm just going to add a little teaspoon. And that's the final ingredient. It will dissolve. There you go.
All right, so I'm just gonna put this on a really low heat now and let it simmer away for about an hour. And if the, uh, the level of liquid goes down, I'll just top it up with a bit more red wine. And it should taste amazing. Pop that lid on. Yeah. Oh, look at me, I just come from the garden. I'm as wet as a, look, look, I'm all wet. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to have a look around because I need to get some inspiration for my gardener's cottage. Oh, the cottage. I can't yeah. wait. I really can't wait. And I've got a, a vision that in the kitchen, it won't be as big as this, it'll probably be like half the size of this, but in the kitchen I want an old dresser like this covered with blue and white china. You can have your spode and your incredible booths all below Well, I've, I've got the booths collection, but what I am desperate for is some spode. So I might just <laughs> help myself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll have that one too. Thank you very much. It's just like a shop, isn't it? Like, oh, is it? I didn't realise this was just like I'll a have shop. That one too. That one too. Oh, I'll probably put these back actually. It's all fun and games till someone loses an eye or a plate. But yeah, I'm definitely going to get some spiral and definitely invest because I love it. Yeah, I love their giant cups, those ones, they are so good in the morning. Because I, I do require a lot of tea, yeah, to get started. I mean, I mean, that's not the saucer for it, but basically it's the same size. The saucer's just there, look, for that one. For that one? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't quite seem right, does it? But it works. Just cup of tea in the morning. And uh, the is kind of nice for lunches. You can make a tomato yeah. soup, have a little bit of bread on the saucer yeah, as well. In there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely going to invest in a bit of spode from my garden. I love the use of the word invest in that sentence, Michael. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is an investment. If you look after them, if you don't smash them, um, then they're going to last for years. It is they? a lifetime of pleasure. And they just get they get more collectible as they get older. Mm. So even if you buy the new stuff, eventually it will be old collectible stuff. In about 200 years' time, you'll make a fortune. <laughs> Someone will. It won't be me. <laughs> So tell me what's going on, Steph. The postman arrived. So this is just what you've received today as gifts. It's unbelievable. We're speechless. We're, the postman's speechless as well. The postman can't believe it. This, this is a lot. Yeah. The, the, this is a lot. We just feel completely humbled by it. Like, people are so kind. I'm completely overwhelmed. Every day when this happens, I'm overwhelmed. So I'm just going to check on the sauce, see how it's doing. Oh, it's not gone red yet. I promise you it will go red eventually once the tomatoes have released their pigment. But for now, it's doing quite nicely. So we have an update on the parcel situation, Stephanie. Parcel situation, incredibly exciting, and I need to update Mummy on it. There's a couple of gifts which I need to put aside because they're for Antoine. Okay. Um, and then there's two big parcels which are plants that I ordered for you, Mummy. Oh, so they're not actually gifts. No, these, these ones two are... are what you've ordered plants for the garden. Yeah, these are. So this one, Mummy, do you remember when we went to the Priory? And we smelt all those incredible mints. I bought them. I ordered the banana mint. What? The, yes, there's strawberry mint, banana mint. Let's see if we've got the list of what's here. Chocolate mint, strawberry mint, and ginger mint. Do they actually taste of the fruit? Yes. Let's see if I can find the banana mint and you can try it, though it probably tastes a little different. Mont oh, strawberry mint. That's the strawberry mint, but the banana one was really okay. strong when I tried it. Strawberry mint, here we go. Oh, this, is the, this is the banana one. Does it have a hint of strawberry, that one? Yeah. Really? I'm going like, to try that in a sec. It actually tastes, a, it's got a hint of strawberry. Try this and see if you can pick up on the banana. So it's banana flavoured mint. Yes. Well, I'm up for trying new things. <laughs> That's weird. It's like a cross between mint and like those banana sweets you get. You know, like the, the banana sweets you used <laughs> to get as a child. <laughs> Can't work out if I like it or I hate it. I loved that when I tried it in the garden. It just blew my mind. Do you want to try the chocolate one? Well, yeah. Where's the chocolate one? Is It, it must be this one, I guess. Wow. That one's so strong. Mm. It's the same aftertaste as eating mint choc chip. It's bizarre. What are you going to do with it, Steph? I'm not going to do anything. 
That is the Wonder Woman who's going to do something with it. And the other packet is from a normal company. We've got 60 strawberries in three different varieties and three normal French tarragons. Well, that'd be good for next year. <laughs> I was just looking at this one and I saw that I'm going to put it aside because it's to open with Antoine. But here it says, you'll find a small gift for each of Lalanne's residents, including one for Jerry and Michael Petrick. Me? Yes from Barbara Millet. So apparently in here, there's a gift for you and I think you are allowed to open that with Barbara Antoine. Millet, I recognise that name. I can't believe you're the sort of man who, when you go to other friends' houses, gets gifts sent to you just in case you're there. What is this? Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. I love this sort of rustic style mm. as well. It looks like it's really old. Gosh, it's beautiful paper. But it looks like old paper. Oh, thank you so much, Barbara. This is such a lovely present. Thank you very much. Okay, well, the sauce is cooking. I just need to make a quick bechamel sauce. So in this pan here, I've put 150 grams of butter. That should do about a litre and a half of liquid. So for a good bechamel sauce, you need to make a roux. So you've got 150 grams of butter. So I'm gonna to need to make that equal parts with flour. So it's gonna be 150 grams of flour. So I'll just weigh that out. There you go, 150 grams of flour. So now, to make the roux, I'm going to melt the butter. All right, so the butter's melted. It's gonna turn down the heat a little bit. So to that, I'm gonna add just a pinch, a pinch of ground cloves, a little bit of nutmeg, give that a quick stir, and in goes the flour. I'm just going to combine this all together so it makes a nice smooth paste. Right, so now this is fully combined. If I start adding the milk bit by bit right now, you're gonna get a really strong taste of flour in the bechamel sauce. So what we need to do is, just let it cook through for a minute. You see it's starting to bubble. By cooking it a little bit, it's gonna take away that floury taste. Right, that's all cooked through. What I'm gonna do is now, Add the milk. Now you have to add the milk little by little. So just a little bit first. And then mix. Right, so I've just added some milk and mixed it. You can see it's gonna go a bit clumpy. It's gonna to start to look a bit like mashed potato at first. So you're gonna just be patient. Add a bit more milk, not too much. All right, that's pretty much all of the liquid added now. This needs a good stir. Now, it's gonna to have to stay on the heat until it's sort of almost boiled. But you have to keep moving it. Because if you don't keep stirring, it's gonna to stick to the bottom. There we go. Perfectly smooth bechamel sauce. Mrs. Patmore, eat your heart out. Right, that's almost done. Now I'm gonna add a special ingredient. 125 grams of blue cheese. Now trust me, this makes it taste amazing. Just pop that in. Get up. Now it will melt in there slowly. Just keep stirring. Okay, so the oven's on. Thank goodness I've been waiting for this for hours. Mm, me too. 170 degrees Celsius. What that is in Fahrenheit, I have no idea. <laughs> so, I'm, oh, my apologies. Um, I've got the bechamel sauce. You just made this yourself, didn't you? I just made it, the bechamel sauce. No need for this wicked creature. <laughs> yeah, that's how I the make mine. Mix. Well, look, for years I made it this way. Yeah. But so the thermomix is super useful to do it in the background. Roquefort and... Roquefort? Yeah, Roquefort and another type of blue cheese in it. Actually, no, it's not Roquefort, it's just blurred up 
de Vergne. Bleu d'Auvergne. Bleu, mm. bleu d'Auvergne, yes. So, there you go, bechamel sauce. And then we've got the tomato and beef sauce. The ragu. Now you can use any shape pan. This is quite a deep one. But I couldn't find one that was a bit shallower but wider, but this is going to do fine. So, just using pre-made lasagna sheets, dried ones. That way you don't have to worry about your mixture being too runny because this will soak up some of the juice. That's in there. It's a bit narrow at the bottom, so I'm going to have to take a few of these out. There you go. It doesn't matter if it's messy, you'll never see it once it's all uh, constructed. Some of the sauce. Now, I think there's a couple of different ways that you can construct a lasagna. You can put pasta, um, your ragu, and then pasta, and then your bechamel. But I, I just put bechamel on top of the pasta sauce, or like the tomato sauce, so just like this. You don't see it. It's just the top that you see, really, and the sides. Next layer of pasta. I wonder if we can get in there. Perfect. And then the next layer, same again. So I'll see you when we need the top. Oh, Michael, look how pretty you made it. So I've finished all the layers. Oh. Some of them have bled a bit on the sides, but that'd be fine. It's gorgeous, look at the top. And on the top, you've got a layer of bechamel, a thick layer of bechamel, and in there I've put mozzarella. Oh, and that's the marjoram from the garden? Yeah, white pepper and marjoram. Oh. So that's what's going Sorry, in. I had a little shudder. Oh, calm down, <laughs> stop, Jarvis. Wait till you tasted it. <laughs> now it's gonna go in a preheated oven to about 160 to 170 degrees Celsius for about 40 to 45 minutes. And then can we finally once, eat it? Once the cheese is all melted <laughs> and it's all golden and lovely and bubbling on the top, then you can tuck in. Mm, okay, in the meantime, I will lay the table. Thank you very much. Oh, I think lasagna's ready. Let's go downstairs. Mummy Kins, are you going to have wine today? Yes, I shall. Thank you. After a hard day in thank the you, drizzle, you. in the rain. So everyone's waiting for the lasagna. This is happening. I think it's done. Should have a look? Yes, I made some garlic bread, I forgot to tell you. Oh, did you? Yes, there's some in there. Let's have a look. Put these on. Oh, now that looks perfect. That was worth waiting for. All day. Yeah. Oh yes. Does it look good? Mmm. Smells good. It, it looks beautiful. Wow. There you go. It looks like beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ta-da! Do you mind getting the garlic bread out whilst you're oh, there? Of course. I've put a board for it just over here. With my um protective gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one here. Yeah. Wonderful. Hope it's okay. Let's eat. Yes. Bravo, chef. Bravo, bravo, chef. <laughs> I think I'm making very large portions. Mm. I don't mind that. The smell is beautiful. Thank you very much. Hope it tastes beautiful. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's the next test. <laughs> oh, look at this garlic bread. So much. Do you want to try that? There's so much butter that... You it just seems more it butter than... No, I put it inside, oh, okay. but it somehow seeped all the way through as well. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Cheers. And fun Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.